Hello everyone and welcome to Edusers Clinics. Today we will continue our discussion on medical statistics and this is going to be a very interesting video because with this video we will be nearly completing most of the concept based discussions on measures of central tendency, measures of location and dispersion. So we have already discussed the DCOVA framework. We have seen the type of variables and the type of measurement scales and data. We have seen sampling methods and we have seen how to graphically represent the data as well as some of the analytics that we started based on measures of central tendency. So descriptive statistics also we saw in the previous video. We saw that central tendency is basically the center of the data. The data distribution gives you a curve and that curve can help us in identifying how the data is distributed. The central tendency measures that are the mean, median, mode and the measures of dispersion or how far the values are from center. When we talk of measures of location, basically if you have a graph and you know that this is how the data is distributed, and you want to find a single value, already saw how to locate the center of the data that is by mean, median and mode. But there are two other measures that you need to learn that is the percentiles and the quartiles. These are again the measures of location where a particular value of your data is located in the data distribution. So we have already seen in the previous video that the basis of all these discussions is to simplify data, okay? With machine learning, AI, the lot of data that is there, the most important concepts are statistical concepts like the center of the data, the location of a particular value, percentiles and quartiles. When we talk of measures of dispersion or how the data is dispersed, the important values that you can know are range and interquartile range and variance and standard deviation. So variance and standard deviation we are going to discuss in a separate topic and in a separate teaching model because it's going to be a very interesting topic. And when we discuss the measures of location range and interquartile range, we are basically discussing the five point summary which helps in creating the box plot. Okay, Some of the measures here are resistant measures that is the measures that are not affected by extreme values and that also we will see in this presentation. So when we talk of quartiles, percentiles, conceptually what is a quarter? When a dollar is 100 cents, a quarter of a dollar is 25 cents or 100 by 4 cents, that is 1 by 4. So a quarter conceptually is 100 by 4, okay, or 25 percent. Similarly, if we see a clock and we say it's quarter to 12, we are 15 minutes short of 12 and it is basically 15 minutes, that is the quarter here or the total number divided by 4. So for any data, if you take the total number of samples and divide it by 4, you should get quarter, right? Similarly, quarter of a pizza pie chart or a circle is 100 by 4 or 1 by 4, that is 25 percent, right? So 25 percent is quarter okay so you have 1 by 4 that is 25 percent so quartile and percentile are derived from these terms and that is why you can see these examples these are very common routine life scenarios that we use these terms and that is how these terms are derived so now when we look at quartile and percentile based on our data distribution we have already seen this chart in the previous video. So if you missed out on how this is created, look at the previous video. Here we know that 0, 50 and 100 are the values where the data is dispersed. So this 0 to 100 covers the entire data, right? And 50 is the center of the data here, okay, for our understanding. We are taking 50 as the 
center of the data. Now, if this is so, the 25 and 75 will be somewhere as we are showing here, right? Location wise. And it is this 25 and 75 that help us in understanding quartiles. So we said that if 100 samples or 100 values are there in this sample data distribution, then the 25th will be quartile 1, the 50th will be quartile 2 or the median, and the 75th will be quartile 3. Don't worry if you are not understanding, we will be defining these terms also in the next slide. But conceptually, what you are trying to do is you are trying to locate or understand the data distribution from as few the values as possible because based on this sample values, you are going to determine the population parameters, right? So that is why you need to know these values so that you can create correct estimates of the population parameters. Now, Q2 or second quartile is basically the median, okay? When we talk of interquartile range, now it's very easy, it's Q3, Q1, right? So Q3 minus Q1 is interquartile value and Q1 to Q3 values will be interquartile range. Also, if you can make out between 25 and 75 are 50 different values that are going to be there or 50% of the data is going to be between 25 and 75. And that is why this is known as middle 50, okay? So 50% 50 of your data will be between first and third quartile and that is known as middle 50. Now, if we talk of percentile, okay, percentile can be first percentile, second percentile, third percentile, then in that sense, Q1 becomes the 25th percentile, Q2 becomes the 50th percentile, and Q3 becomes the 75th percentile, okay? So just to quickly revise this, I know it's a bit complicated if you are using these terms for the first time. We have already seen a data distribution. So this is the distribution, how our data is located. We have already seen the central tendency measure. If the median is 50, Okay, 50% of data is on this side, 50% of data is on the other side. So that is the second quartile or the median. Okay, if you divide your data in a way that 25% of data is on one side, right? So 25% of data is between 0 and 25 and 75% is on the other side that is Q1 or first quartile. And this is also known as 25th percentile okay similarly third quartile is 75 25 okay so 75 percent to the left 25 percent to the right is third quartile so q1 q2 q3 okay between q1 and q3 is the interquartile range and we know that 50 percent of data values will be between q1 and q3 and that is known as middle 50 right all this is important because when you want to represent your data, you are not going to draw these curves every time, okay? If you can drop this curve to a very simple representation, that is the aim of descriptive statistics, okay? So now what we have seen, Q1 or the first quartile divides data such that 25% values are on the left and 75% values are on the right. And the value, Q1 value is n plus 1 by 4th value. Q2 is median. We have already seen how to use median. It divides data such that 50% are on either side. Q3 divides data such that 75% values are on the left and 25% values are on the right of 3 into n plus 1 by 4th value or the 75th value. Q1, therefore, is the 25th percentile. Q2 is median or 50th percentile. And Q3 is the 75th percentile. So this is how quartiles and percentiles can be correlated. 
interquartile range we have already seen gives you the middle 50 spread that is Q1 to Q3 and interquartile range value is Q3 minus Q1. If you just understand this slide, your entire concept of measures of location is clear and this will give you the five point summary and box plot. Remember that box plots are very important to understand because they are very routinely used in the current statistical world. So if you understand this concept, it is going to be very easy. Now what we are going to do is we have taken our line okay, below the Q1, Q2, Q3. So just to revise, you have already seen all these values. Now suppose we take our line and we start creating the box plot okay, and get the five point summary. Basically what we do is we take the representative line of the data and we identify the first quartile, second quartile and third quartile. So if you take your representative data line, okay, like I said, we want to get rid of the curve. We want to create values in a way that the data can be represented very simply. Okay. So once you have got your Q1, Q2, Q3 value, remove your data line and just put a box where the Q1, Q2 and Q3 are summarized. So this gives you the middle 50, right? You know that this is the middle 50 values or the values which are between the first and the third quartile. The central line is the median, okay? So now from that entire curve, if I would ask you some very simple questions about data, Right. What is the smallest value in your data? What is the largest value in your data? Suppose your data is 1 to 100 and I ask you where is the value 22 located in this data? You know that it is between the smallest value and Q1 because Q1 is 25. So second example, suppose I ask you in a data where smallest value is 0 and the largest value is 100, this is 25, 50 and 75. Where is your 72 located? You know that it is located in this part of the data distribution. Can you measure the value 106 using this data set? The answer is no because the largest value is 100. Can you use any negative value? The answer is no because the smallest value is 0. So this is how a box plot can help you in understanding data. Now box plot also gives you more information and this is basically the box plot of a five point summary. So if you are asked a five point summary in exam, you are looking at the smallest value, the largest value, the 25th, 50th and the 75th percentile or the median quartile first and quartile third. Okay. So this is basically your very commonly asked question, the box plot of a five point summary. So five point summary is the numbers, box plot is the graphical representation. Both of them we have cleared. Now let us see an example. Suppose you have one to 20, which is your data set Q1 will be 25%, that is the first five values or 5.25. So when you get 21 by 4, that is n plus 1 by 4, it is 5.25. The rule for quartile is round it off to the closest whole number. So your 25% value of this data is the fifth value or 5, right? So Q1 is 5. Similarly, median for this data, you know the center point that is 10.5, isn't it? We have calculated it in the previous video. So if you missed it out, have a look at that video. These concepts are very important to understand. When we talk of Q3, it is 3 into n plus 1 by 4. That is 15.75th value or rounding it off to the closest whole number, the 16th value that is 60. Interquartile range, the middle 50 is will be in between 5 to 16, right? So that is your interquartile range and your interquartile range value is 11, okay? So 
this is how you can identify all your data points from a very simple concept of quartile and percentile. Now, if you put a box plot of this data, the smallest value is 1, the largest value is 20, median is 10.5, your Q1 is 5 and your Q3 is 16. So this is how a box plot is created. Now the values that are not affected by extreme measures. Okay, So whatever your smallest and largest value will be, Q1 will be the 25th percentile and Q3 will be the 75th percentile and Q2 will be the 50th percentile and they are not going to change whether your smallest value is 0, minus 50, plus 50 or the largest value is 1000. The 25th value is going to be your Q1 and the 75th percentile is going to be your Q3. So values that are not affected by extremes are resistant measures and the answer to that is Q1, Q2 and Q3. That is the three quartiles or median Q1 and Q3. Now we have seen this box plot. You may think why are we learning this box plot? Well, it gives you a lot of information. We have seen some of it in the previous slide. We will not confuse you with type of sample distributions, but a box plot of this type can now be used to imagine a data distribution. Okay, so if you only have this box plot, you know that this is how your data distribution is going to look like. Okay, and this is a normal distribution and that is why your median is exactly at the center of the line. The box is in the center of the line. We will discuss this in detail in one of the upcoming videos. Okay, not in the video on variance and SD, but in one of the upcoming videos where we will see how box plot can give you an idea of the type of distribution. So there are various types of distribution. So far, we have touched on only the normal distribution. Here, mean is equal to median is equal to Q2. Okay, if you try to find the mean of 1 to 20, it is going to be 10.5. Okay, so you can try to find the mean and mean is equal to median and that is why this is normal distribution. So measures of location we have seen now completely. The center, okay, and the percentiles and quartiles, we have seen the measures of dispersion partially. We have seen the range and interquartile range. We have seen what is five point summary and the box plot and the resistant measures. We will have some different pattern of teaching for calculating statistics, real time videos on that because it is very important to understand how actually the calculations are made and why they are made. So the calculative part of statistics we will see in live lectures and some of the concepts again will be seen on presentations like this. Thank you.